Hey everyone, and welcome to your last video lesson for the week. Today we're going to be discussing the chain rule for paths. So earlier this week we covered some pretty big topics, right? Tangent planes and differentials, parametric equations. In this lesson we're going to be using both of these ideas, but as a topic in and of itself, the chain rule for paths is very short and sweet. In particular, we're only going to be doing one video lesson on it. This section corresponds to the first part of section 11.4 from the textbook, so check it out for further information. The setup for our discussion is as follows. We have a function z that depends on variables x and y. Here, z is equal to xy squared plus cos x. Here's the twist though. x and y themselves depend on another variable, t. So here, x is t squared and y is 1 plus 2t. From our lessons on parametric equations, we know we can think of t like time, right? And as time passes, we can imagine the little bug walking around the xy plane, tracing out some curve as it moves. Its coordinates at time t are given by x and y. So let's suppose that in this example, our little bug traces out this elliptical curve that you see here. As time passes and the bug walks around this ellipse, its coordinates x and y are changing. But z depends on x and y, right? So this z value is also changing. As the bug walks around the ellipse, the height of this function moves over time. So we can think of z as depending on x and y, but we could also think of z depending on t, right? As time passes, x and y change, and therefore so too does z. So if we choose to think of z as a function of just one variable, t, then we can plot the relationship between these two quantities in a 2D plane, just like you did back in Calc 1. And now we can ask the usual questions from Calc 1. In particular, we can ask, what's the derivative of z with respect to time? This isn't a partial derivative anymore. We're thinking of z as a function of just one variable. So this is a total derivative like you knew from Calc 1. Now, one way that we could compute this derivative is by taking these expressions for x and y and substituting them back into this expression. That would give us z as a function of t. Then we could take the derivative as normal. Oh, but come on, no one wants to do that. No one wants to plug these things in and then have to take a derivative, because that's probably going to involve product rules and chain rules and a whole bunch of nasty stuff. So instead, I'm going to show you a different way for calculating this derivative. To see a classier way of solving for dz over dt, consider this expression that we get from our differentials. See, I told you they'd be back. Our expression says that dz is the partial derivative with respect to x times dx, plus the partial derivative with respect to y times dy. Now, if we go ahead and divide both sides of this expression by the infinitesimal dt, what we get is dz over dt, which is what we're looking for, is equal to the partial derivative of z with respect to x times dx over dt plus the partial derivative with respect to y times dy over dt. Ah, now that is pretty cool. What it's telling me is that if I want to know dz over dt, I should calculate the partial derivatives of z with respect to x and y, I should differentiate x and y with respect to t, and put them together in this way. This rule, by the way, is called the chain rule for paths. The chain rule for paths. To see this rule in action, let's return to our example from the last slide. Again, we're given a function z of x and y. Both x and y are functions of t, and we want to know dz over dt. Well, according to my chain rule for paths, I can compute this by computing the partial derivatives with respect to x and y, and the derivatives of x and y with respect to t. So let's start with our partial derivatives. The partial derivative of z with respect to x, according to our definition up here, should be y squared minus sine x, and the partial derivative of z with respect to y should be 2xy. Uh, additionally, the derivative of x with respect to time is 2t, and the derivative of y with respect to time is just 2. So if I now wish to know dz by dt, well, by the chain rule for paths, dz by dt is the partial with respect to x times dx by dt, plus the partial with respect to y 
times dy by dt. That is, it should be y squared minus sine x times 2t plus the partial with respect to y, that's 2xy, times the derivative of y with respect to t, times 2. Now notice that the function that we got in the end involves x and y still, but we really asked for the derivative of z with respect to t. So our final answer should probably just have t's in it. To accomplish this, we should replace the x's and y's in our final answer using these functions of t above. My derivative is therefore 1 plus 2t squared minus sine of t squared, all times 2t, uh, plus 4 uh, times t squared times 1 plus 2t. And there you have it, folks, your first application of the chain rule for paths. As a second example of our chain rule for paths, consider the problem of finding dw over dt at time t equals 1 if w is equal to xy plus e to the xz, and each of x, y, and z are functions of t. x is ln t, y is 2t, z is 1 minus t. Now I know what you're thinking. Whoa, we have three variables now, right? x, y, and z, and each of those are functions of t. You know, <laughs> you didn't tell us a chain rule for three variables. Well, no, I didn't, but it turns out the same chain rule for paths will extend to however many variables you want. So in this case, dw by dt is partial w by partial x, dx by dt, plus partial w by partial y, dy by dt, plus partial w by partial z, dz by dt. Let's see if we can compute some of these derivatives. The partial derivative of w with respect to x, well, I'm going to get y plus, well, then I have a chain rule. So y plus the derivative of the top is z e to the xz. Next, the derivative of x with respect to t is 1 over t. So 1 over t. The derivative of w with respect to y, okay, well, that's only going to involve this first term. It should give me an x. The derivative of y with respect to t is just 2. The derivative of w with respect to z, okay, the first term doesn't come into play, but again, I have a chain rule. I should get x e to the xz. And the derivative of z with respect to t is just minus 1. So if I clean all this up, what I should get is y plus z e to the xz times 1 over t, plus 2x minus x e to the xz. Now again, I know what you're thinking. Oh, I don't want to have to substitute these expressions for x, y, and z into this function to get something that just involves t. Well, fortunately, in this case, we don't have to do that because we're looking for the derivative here at t equals 1, right? So if we compute x, y, z, when t is 1, we can substitute those numbers into here instead. When t equals 1, well, what do I get? I get x equals ln 1, which is 0, y is 2 times 1, which is 2, and z is 1 minus 1, which is 0. So my final answer should be dw over dt at t equals 1 is equal to, well, y is 2, so 2 plus 0 times e to the 0 times 1 over 1 plus 2 times 0 minus 0 e to the 0 times 0. That gives me what? This goes away, this goes away, this goes away. My final answer is just 2. If you're looking for a nice compact way to remember the chain rule for paths, consider one of these tree diagrams. We put the big function z at the top, z depends on x and y, the intermediate variables, so they're at the next level, but each of x and y depends on some parameter t, which is found at the bottom. The idea behind the tree diagram is that if you want to know, say, dz by dt, then you follow every path down your tree that leads you from z to t. 
Every time you go down a path, you have to differentiate, and you add the results from different paths at the end. So for example, when we go down path 1, we take the partial derivative of z with respect to x. It has to be a partial derivative, right? Because we have two variables here. But then we take the derivative of x with respect to t. So we get partial z by partial x, dx by dt. Now we add the result from the second path. Partial z by partial y, dy by dt. Next week, when we generalize the chain rule to more complicated relationships, you'll see that these tree diagrams can be really useful.